Hi, I'm Jakuso, and today I'm going to be showing you a whole bunch of advanced rolling techniques. Nah, they're not necessarily advanced. Ah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jakuso, and today I'm going to be showing you a whole bunch of rolling techniques to improve your game in Bakugan Battle Planet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of techniques to get into, but first, let's run through some of the basics that you have to know before you can start improving your rolling. Uh, a lot of people have requested a video like this since I came back to the channel. Uh, it, specifically, I want to thank uh, RXXC, or Raging Cajun, uh, here on YouTube. He's one of my favorite new Bakutubers, and he asked me to make this video. Hopefully, it'll be a big help. When most people play Bakugan, they don't put much focus into rolling techniques. They'll focus on strategy, they'll focus on their card picks, they'll focus on their Bakugan picks, but they don't really care about rolling. Most people's rolling technique starts and stops at a technique I like to call just kinda tossing it. Doesn't work very well. Today, I'll be sticking to techniques that are specific, controllable, functional, repeatable, and cool sounding. The fundamentals! Spin. You can have forward spin, back spin, or side spin on your Bakugan. Some techniques can put excess forward spin on a Bakugan that will increase speed and increase power, but it's going to make your magnet placement more unreliable. Backspin is really only applicable to one kind of technique, so I'm gonna get into that later. The other is side spin. Distance is all important in rolling. Most of these techniques and magnet placement are going to be based around a roughly two card length distance. That is the absolute closest you're allowed to get your Bakugan before you roll it. So you can have your Bakugan at the two card line, or you can have the Bakugan behind the two card line. Magnet position! This is, maybe, the most important thing that no one seems to care about. I would recommend magnet either straight down or slightly in front of straight down to land it on the core you want it to be on. That might vary depending on play surface, how hard you roll, and what technique it is. Just experiment. Play surface. Play surface is all important because it will either make or break your techniques. I'm playing on an old school Baku mat right here. It's a pretty frictiony surface. Things don't get too much forward spin. Backspin will cause a background to stop pretty short, sometimes even before it gets to a card. And on curve rolls or spin rolls, it has enough traction to actually curve around. On a slick surface, like on a hardwood table, slick cardboard, your back are gonna, are gonna slide around a lot more. I definitely recommend more friction. That will help your rolling. But sometimes you're not gonna have access to the play surface you want, and you just have to be able to compensate. Okay, those are the fundamentals, so let's move on to our first technique, the straight shoot. Take your back on, put it at two card lengths away, magnet side down, palm heel on the table, Index finger bent right behind the Bakugan. Gently extend your index finger to push the Bakugan out. This is pretty much the simplest possible roll for a Bakugan, and its applications are somewhat limited. It's good for beginners, it's very nice for testing magnet position, uh, because generally it doesn't get too much forward spin on the Bakugan. It'll roll very even until it reaches the target. Uh, if you let your finger get off-center from the middle of the Bakugan, you can accidentally nudge the Bakugan in one direction or the other. You might want to use two fingers to hit the Bakugan from both angles at once. That can sometimes help you get a straighter roll. It works fine for ultras, but they're probably not going to stand up this way. Ultras usually require a little bit more forward spin on the Bakugan, so they have enough momentum to flip over. For example, Mantanoid, just with a normal straight shoot, he's just going to flop onto his back. Uh, Garganoid is an exception, Nilius is an exception, because those Bakugan are kind of self-propelled by the powerful magnets in the tail. But if you want to do something fancy, I wouldn't use a straight shoot for ultras. It's a very gentle roll, so it's measured, but it doesn't really have much power, and it doesn't really have much speed. Your opponent can very easily overpower you, knock your Bakugan off the cores before he even gets there, or block you off at the end of the cards. Next one, Catapult Shoot. Take your index finger and middle finger, place them down on the table like a ramp. 
You put your back gun at the top of the ramp, find the best magnet position, and gently roll it out. It's really hard to gauge magnet position with this technique because everyone's hands are different sizes, everyone's fingers are different lengths, but you can figure out what works for you. I don't really have any recommendations. You can adjust the height of the ramp to increase or decrease power. You can make it really low for a slow roll or make it a little bit higher if you want more speed on it. It is an easy, straight, clean shot. The biggest downside of this technique is it does not work very well with ultra backer guns that have a lot of Alto Bronte's disease because it's not rolling on the center rolling track, it's rolling on the sides, and that's usually where all of the bumps are placed on ultra backer gun. But if you have a smooth backer gun, if you're just using cores, it can be a really, really useful, simple technique. I'm bad at the next technique. This technique I call the marble shoot. It's a really old school technique. You can find it on the internet if you search how to shoot a marble. It basically consists of putting the bakugan inside your curled forefinger, putting your thumb behind the bakugan, and letting it roll out from your fingers. Uh, you can put more power in this by really squeezing the bakugan with your index finger and pushing it out with your thumb. That's the idea behind the traditional marble shoot. If you just want to hit your opponent's bakugan and keep both of you from standing, this is a great technique for that. But if you're not good at it, you can way overshoot, or you can make a bakugan pop open before it even hits the car. Uh, it can also be a little bit difficult to gauge magnet placement with this for the same reason I criticize the catapult shoot, because everyone's hands are different sizes. Just practice, figure out what works. Pivot shoot. I made up this technique and it is my new go-to for Battle Planet. You've probably seen me do this technique in some of my other videos. It's a little bit hard to explain, but bear with me, it's pretty intuitive. Place the backer on, magnet side down on the table, put your palm heel on the table, either at or just behind the horizontal line that the backer gun is on. Put your index finger right on top, bend it just slightly, and then pivot your wrist on your palm heel while extending your index finger to send the backer gun out perfectly straight. You can see I'm smiling because I made up this technique and I like it a lot because it works incredibly well and I am unhappy that I'm giving out this secret because if you can get good at this technique, it's probably gonna be your favorite. It is reliable, controllable, measured, incredibly accurate, like I said, when you're good at it. Also, it is an incredibly good way to make an ultra bakugan stand because you can put just the perfect amount of forward momentum on it and just enough power into it uh, to make an ultra bakugan flip over. Uh, there are a few things that make this a little bit tough to do. For one, bakugan have a tendency to curve the direction that your hand is rotating and just go off to the side of the table rather than shooting out straight. It's a very subtle technique to fix this. All you have to do is put your finger a little bit closer, bend your finger, and extend it as you turn your wrist. That will keep your back run moving in a straight line. This technique is really intuitive, but it takes practice. Easy to learn, hard to master. I highly recommend this technique, especially for Battle Planet. This is where we start getting into some trick shots side spin shoot. The trick with this is either picking bottom heavy or side heavy bakugan to either make sure the bakugan is magnet side down even as it spins. If it's a bottom heavy bakugan, you have to make sure not to shoot it too hard or it will throw the weight out to the sides. It can be at pretty much any distance. Uh, just put magnet side down, hold the bakugan between your thumb and the middle segment of your forefinger, and gently squeeze your thumb and forefinger together to send the bakugan rolling out onto the hide matrix. It can be used either as a straight roll or a curved roll. Curved roll is tough. Generally, the spin of the Bakugan is going to go opposite to whatever direction you want the Bakugan to curve in. If you use your left hand, it'll spin from the right side in. If you use your right hand, it'll spin from the left side in. 
Uh, it's a subtle curve, but it can be just enough to avoid your opponent's back gone entirely and maybe stand on that last row of cores. When it's being rolled straight, you can put a lot of power behind it, but it's unlikely that it'll actually stand on the cores because it's probably gonna throw the magnet off to the side. This technique technically works best with side heavy Bakugan. There aren't any side heavy Bakugan yet. I have my hopes up. The best Bakugan I found for this technique is Fangzor. Fangzor is a very useful Bakugan strategically, but he's a little bit tough to roll because he's so bottom heavy. But with a side shoot, it, it, it works okay. It's a little bit more likely to land towards the middle or the back row of cores because as it passes over many cores, the magnet pulls the bottom of the Bakugan more center and stabilizes it. On the first row, that's usually not the case because it's rolling at an angle because of the weight distribution. But if you roll gently, it's much more likely that it'll stand right on that front row. So if you've got a bunch of good cores placed on that front row and you've got a Fangzor, do a gentle side spin shoot and you can probably get it to stand there. The side swirl or curve roll. There are a couple ways to do it. The backer tech technique is to basically do a straight shoot with a bottom heavy Bakugan, but put your finger off to one side. It'll roll out at an angle and come all the way back around and stand back there. That's the best way to do it in Battle Planet. The way we used to do this technique was with an old Bakugan called Ravenoid, which was more bottom heavy than any other Bakugan since, including Fangzor. You put the Bakugan with the bottom heavy side all the way pointed to the right, then you do a gentle marble shoot, and the weight brings the Bakugan right back around because it's pulling it this way as it rolls. This technique is very hard to do with the shooter technique unless it's a Ravenoid. Uh, I've actually found it really easy to do with a straight shoot. Um, when I started this video, I didn't think it was this easy, and I remembered how to do this technique while I was shooting all of the B-reel for this video. This technique requires a wide, smooth play surface. I cannot stress that enough. Don't try it on a rough surface. Don't use the straight shoot technique on a surface that's too slick. It just won't work at all because the back of the gun is gonna be thrown all over the place. But it's really cool and it will blow people's minds if you can do this technique during normal gameplay. Cause it's, it's, it's awesome looking. And finally, the backspin shoot. This one's tough. This one's a little bit hard to break down, and it's really hard to pull off, and it only works in some cases with some Bakugan, but it's another one of those ones that when you get it right, it looks really cool, and it has some potential use. The technique essentially consists of, once again, you can put the Bakugan magnet side down, uh, but the magnet position doesn't really matter this much, because on this technique, the point of the backspin is you get it moving forward at a slow enough pace that it'll pass over the cores, but since it's spinning backwards, the magnet passes over the cores way more times than it would shooting forward. So as a result of that, if you get some really, really good solid backspin on the Bakugan, put the Bakugan down, you can put one finger on top and press down. Or, if you want to try to make it go more straight or get more power, put two fingers on top and press down. Or you can just put your whole hand on top of the Bakugan and, you guessed it, press down. Honestly, pretty much anything that you can put on top of the Bakugan and press down with, the Bakugan will shoot out. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is sometimes the Bakugan won't actually pick up a core at all if you're doing backspin on it. Uh, it'll just go forward, and since they're spinning backwards at such a high speed, it'll the core will just fly right off, or the back gun will fly right off the core before the magnet has a chance to really grab on. Uh, I, I have more tips that I want to say, but most of my other tips would just consist of me saying that the pivot shoot is very good, and you should get good at it. 
When Battle Planet first came out, I had not rolled back run in years, I was not good at it anymore, and I had to figure out new techniques and new ways to compensate for the larger size. Because with the, with the larger size, magnet position is totally different. So it, it, it varies depending on what Bakugan you're using. But those are all the techniques that I think are applicable to Bakugan Battle Planet. If you've got more techniques that I don't know about, let me know and I might make a sequel with more stuff. All of this stuff is really just my opinion and what I've found works for me. If you have other ideas, go for it, man. Like I said, find what works for you. Practice. Please practice. You're professional. <laughs> You're professional. Ah! <laughs> That's that's not enough. <coughs> That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like, you, if you, I, I wait. I have an ending, right? There's a thing that I say at the end. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like this video. If you want to subscribe to my channel, subscribe to it. Hit the bell if you like bells. Uh, uh, share the video if you if you're just a sort of a sharing and caring person. That'd be fun, and that would help me out. I'll see you next time. Huh.